Hello our most valued student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our revision session and today I want to look at um, some revision session for grade 11 mathematics and I took one of the previous papers and I just wanted to focus on question number one. So if you are doing your grade 11, this can be a good opportunity for you to revise for your final exam. So as I said, I'm looking at question number one and question number one is out of 20 marks. As you can see, the total mark allocation for question number one is 20 marks. Now, what I have noticed with grade 11, students must be aware that there is no formula sheet that you'll be given. Now, one of the most important formulas in question number one is the quadratic formula. So I will encourage you, you need to know the formula by head. So be able to write the formula properly as you are doing your practice. Always remember you need to practice uh, knowing the formula. Now, with that being said, let us look at this question now, which says uh, you need to solve for X. And that is most mainly question number one, you are solving for X. Now let us look at the first part, which is question 1.1.1. So you are, you are required to solve for X and this question is two marks, as you can see. So that is what they bring usually at the beginning. So I'm just gonna solve it here. It says X plus two and uh, the other one, other bracket is three X minus seven and then this is equal to zero so you're supposed to solve for x so the good thing is already it is in brackets so you are saying either the first bracket which is x plus 2 is equal to zero or the second bracket which is 3x minus 7 is equal to zero so that's how you approach it so in the first one you take 2 transpose 2 to the other side to be x is equal to negative 2 that's the first value or in the second one, also transpose the negative 7 will become positive 7. So you'll have 3x is equal to a positive 7. Now the 3 and the x are multiplying there. You can see that. So the only way to separate 3 from x, since it's multiplication, 3 dot x, you can do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So you divide by 3, you divide by 3. Please take note that 3 cannot be cannot cross the equal sign to become from positive to negative. That is wrong. You can only divide by 3 because 3 and x are multiplying. So you do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, and then you get the value of x as 7 over 3. So this is uh, how you solve for x in the first one. It's 2 marks. So what you simply do is you just quickly test your answers. So you are, as you said, it's x plus 1, I mean x plus 2, and you are also given um, this part of 3x minus 7. So the first value said x is minus 2. So you open those brackets. Where there is x, you put minus 2. So it's minus 2 plus 2. And then I've got 3 bracket negative 2 minus 7. This must give me a 0 if it is correct. So I'm getting the 0 as you can see. Now the other value of x was positive uh, 3 over 7. So where there is that, I put a bracket of 3 of, I mean 7 over 3, not 3 over 7. And on the other side, again, where there was negative 2 now, it's 3, 7 over 3. So when I use this value, it must give me a 0, you can see equal to zero so that that what means says my answer is correct so that is the first um question question 1.1.1 now we are looking at the next question which is 1.1.2 now it says you are given that x minus 5x x squared minus 5x is equal to 2 and then remember we're supposed to solve for x and then there is the key it says correct to two decimal places the moment they give you a question and they say you must round off your answers to two decimal places, remember the approach to that question is the quadratic formula. So now what is uh, the quadratic formula? You need to know how to write this formula. As I said, you need to practice well with the formula. 
So first of all, let us look at this equation. This equation is x squared minus 5x is equal to 2. But now you need to write this equation in a quadratic general, the general equation of a quadratic uh, form. Now the general equation for the quadratic form is ax squared. Okay, if I can just do that. So the general form there for the quadratic equation is a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That's the general form of a quadratic equation. So now you need then to write this particular equation. As you can see, they gave you x squared minus 5x is equal to 2. It is not given in the general form. So first things first, take the negative 2 to join the other side such that you will have x squared minus 5x. Now 2 was positive, it will become negative 2 or minus 2 is equal to 0. So when I write it down here, I will have x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. So you can see that it is now matching my general equation. And because it is matching the general equation, I need to find my a, my b, and c. Why am I saying that? Remember, the quadratic equation is given by saying x is equal to minus b, that's the formula you need to know, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is the formula that you need to know by heart. Remember, now key things, the division line, this particular division line here that you are seeing, this division line, it must also overlap in minus b. Don't write it like this, whereby the division line is only affecting um, that square root sign. Remember, it must also overlap the b part. So be careful about that. That's where sometimes students get it wrong. So, which means we need then to find what is our a. We need to find what is our b. And then we need to find what is our c from the formula. So now, as you can see, I have got um, the, the general form and I have matched the original equation. Now, if it's x squared, it means that number there, if there is no number, just know that there is a 1. So it's 1x squared. Why am I doing that? If I cut it here like that, you see it gives me a and 1. If I also cut it here, this we call... Uh, x squared and in a, a x squared and 1 x squared we call a the coefficient of x squared and which means 1 is the coefficient of x squared in this other in the other one so in bx b is the coefficient of x and then we've got minus 5x minus 5 is the coefficient of x and then after that one if i cut it like this just remember what i'm just doing so that it will help you to identify, you can see now, my A is that, which is 1. My B is that, which is minus 5. My C is that, which is negative 2. Don't also forget that the signs are very, very important whenever you're solving this. So now if I write now in my uh, quadratic formula, it will be X will be equal to where there is a B. Remember, I must put minus 5. So now look at this. The formula has a negative first and B is also has, has its own negative. So you say negative, negative 5. So you see how the, uh, they are trying to confuse you there. There are two negatives that you have to deal with. The negative of the formula and the negative of the, um, the equation. So be careful of that. But the proper way to do it is to put a bracket like that whenever you're dealing with that. But even if you don't put a bracket, the calculator will give you the answer. Then you say plus or minus square root of b squared. Again, put a bracket. It's very important now to put a bracket, which is minus 5 squared. If you don't put a bracket where it says b squared, you'll get it wrong. For example, if you write it like this, Remember, this is a revision, so I'm trying to show you where errors are most common. If you say where there is b, you say minus 5, and then you say squared like that. This is 
wrong. Don't forget that. It is not acceptable. Why? Let me show you with the calculator. Whenever you punch it with the calculator, if you say minus 5 squared, in as much as yes, you put the square, but the calculator interprets that as minus 25. But look, if I put a bracket there, and if I put a bracket there, instead of minus 25, I'm now getting a positive 25. So be careful about that. That's why this bracket inside is very, very important. So we'll have minus 5 squared, minus 4. Our A is 1 there. So I'll have 1. And then my C is minus 2. So I'll have the minus 2. And then everything you are dividing by 2 a, again my A, remember, is that number 1. So you put a bracket 1. So always be comfortable to use the brackets. So how do you do that? Then as I said, you rely on the calculator to calculate for you. Don't try to simplify it. Just uh, go to the answer straight away. So it's minus bracket minus 5. And then you start with the plus square root of bracket minus 5 squared minus 4, my A is 1, and my C is negative 2. You see that? And then you divide by 2 bracket 1. Don't forget that. If you can do this, you won't get it wrong. Remember, they say to two decimal places, so you press SD, and you can see the answer is 5,37222. So in two decimal places, is 5,37. You need to know how to round off, but your calculator can do it for you. What you do, you say shift, set up and then you look for six where it says fix so you say six now by fixing it's asking you up to what decimals must be must we round it off for you so the question say two decimal places so you also fix it in two when you do that now when you press sd do you see that you are getting now the answer which is five comma three seven now i need to find both answers because i don't want to punch this again with my calculator i now Remember, the answer is 5,37. That's the first one. Now, you delete, put minus, check the second answer equal to. So, from 5,37, the other one is negative 0,37. So, we had 5,37 or x is equal to minus 0,37. Now, remember that these answers are rounded off to two decimal places according to the requirement of the question. As you can see, they say it's two decimal places. So that is how you solve this particular question. But I always encourage students to test your answers. So what you do is you go to one of those, whether 5,37 or negative 0,37. So how do you test that? So for you to test that, remember, I've got this answer. Don't test with the rounded off answer. So test with the original answer. For example, if I, if I say shift setup and I take it back to 8 as normal and say SD, you see it takes back to the number that is not rounded off. I press 8 to return back to normal. So this number, I'm going to use it into my original equation, which was x squared minus 5x is equal to 2. So when whenever there is x, now I put the value negative 0, 0,37. So if I press SAC and then I say answer equal to, it gives me that last answer that the calculator was having. So which means if I come to the original and say x squared, where there is x squared, I say answer squared minus 5 answer. Remember the answer is that particular answer. It must give me a 2, which is equal to 2. You see that? Why? Because I substituted the original question into that. But if I now try to use my rounded off um, answer, now what you'll see with the challenge of the rounded off one, for example, if I use um, uh, 5,3, uh, let me just see this one. If I say 5,35, and I, I'm, if I'm going to use 5,35 in this particular case, um, it might not give me uh, the answer of 2. You know why? Because it is rounded off. So, for example, if I use instead of 5, let's say, let me use minus 0, 0,37 like previously. 
is negative 0 comma 37 squared minus 5 bracket negative 0 comma 37 remember the first one did work but look at this if i press sd i'm getting 1 comma 48 you know i know 1 comma 48 is actually did i square that okay no i didn't square that it must be squared all right it gives me 1 comma 9 8, 6, 9. Now, round it off, it becomes almost 2, which is fine, but you can see that it's not the exact number that I got. But that is how you can work on that problem. So, it is uh, the solution to that. Now, let us look at the next one. The next one is question 1.1.3. Uh, says, you are supposed to solve for x, and they've given you that x, square root of x minus 3 minus 4 is called to, is called to 5. Now, this is the solution that you need to work for when you're dealing with um, uh, roots. These are roots. So, what you need to do, first things first, you need to identify that this part, x minus 3, and then minus 4 is equal to 5. You need to understand that the negative 4 is not affected by the square root. So the minus 4 must be transposed to the other side before you can do anything with the square root. Remember, I know that you know with the square root you have to square, but you cannot square when that 4 is still there. So you need first to take 4 to the other side so that you only have the square root on one side. So you will have square root of x minus 3. So on this side is equal to 5. Now the negative 4 will become plus 4. That is the first important thing you need to do such that you have got x minus 3 is equal to 9. So don't forget that. First of all, you need to do whereby you take everything to the other side. Then when you have done that, you can then get rid of the square root. Remember, you put a bracket and you square, but what you do on the left, you also do on the right. That is how you get rid of that square root. Then you will have now x minus 3 is equal to 9 squared. Uh, you can maintain it as 9 squared is fine, or you can change it to 81. Then take minus 3 to the other side. You will have, therefore, x is equal to, th from negative 3 is 3, plus 81, and therefore x is equal to 84. So you see, that is the value of x in this particular case. You need to test it. Where there is this particular x, you are going to have what? 84. So let's test that. Um, and see what answer it will give us. It must give us 5 if we put 84. So square root of 84 minus 3, then play forward and say minus 4 because it's not under the square root. You see, it's giving me a 5, which is correct. So that is how you can approach this particular inequality and I hope uh, this is making sense. And you guys, by the way, by the way if, before I forget, if you have not subscribed to our channel and it's the first time to see our, ch our channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications every time we post a new video. Also, to be notified in real time when there is a video that has been uploaded, you can also make sure that you switch on that notification bell. There is a bell in front whereby you can press it. Now, what it means is every time there is a new video, immediately it is uploaded, you guys are able to also get a notification from YouTube. All right, now continuing with this other uh, one, uh, that was 1.1.4. So you can see these are good marks that you can get uh, advantage of in your final exam. So what are we looking at here? It says 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. These are inequalities and it's very, very important for you to understand how to solve them. So what we have is 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. I know there are many ways of factorizing this again, but I will encourage you, if you are already comfortable with the quadratic equation, you can see this is a quadratic formula, I mean equation, so use the quadratic formula so that you can quickly get your answers. Remember the general form says a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So what you do, 
in this particular question first um, remove that sign and instead of the sign you change it into an equal sign remember don't forget that you must first change that greater than or equal to ignore it and solve for x why are we solving for x because we are looking for the critical values so that's how you are, you are, you are, you are, you, that's why i'm doing that so to get the critical values you need to solve for x all right so solve for x that's what we are doing just to get those critical values so in this case back again to say how do you find our a you cut the coefficient of x squared there is 2 so a is 2 there a is equal to 2 you cut before the coefficient of x you can see b b is that number so b is equal to minus 7 and you also cut like that you can see C is that number, which is minus 4. So that's what you're having. Then you write the quadratic formula. It says X is equal to minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC. And everything is divided by 2A. So now you conclude and say X is equal to minus Remember, P is negative 7, so there is the negative sign of the formula, like we did previously, and the negative 7 there. But it's good to protect that with a bracket, plus or minus square root of P squared, put a bracket and say minus 7 squared, minus 4, my A is 2 there, and my C is negative 4, and this thing is all divided by 2 and my a is a 2 so it will give us two values of x which we call them the critical values so when you do that you will have um negative bracket negative 7 we start with a positive plus square root of bracket negative 7 squared minus 4 my a is 2 and my c is negative 4 and this is all over 2 into 2 so that's what we have and you can see the first answer is x is equal to 4 and then we play back with the negative so x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative half so those are called critical values just as we talked about say you are solving for the what for the critical values now when you get the critical values now you need to come back to the solution to say why were we doing all um, these critical values so what you do is you have your number line with the critical values like this all right and then remember your critical values is um, x is equal to you start with the negative 1 negative 1 or you can say negative 0 comma 5 because that is the half and then the other one is 4 that's what you're having there and you start testing um, uh, the values so what you do is you go to your original here and don't worry with the sign you are just looking at the at before the sign there and you're going to test for example you look at a number before 0, 0,5, choose any number like minus 4. So you take a calculator and what you do is where there is x, you put that particular value. So um, if you're choosing any value that you think of, you can just, just use in this case. So for example, I, I use minus 4, so 2 bracket, I've got negative 4 squared, just any value after um, uh, 0, comma, negative 0, comma 0,5 minus 7 bracket negative 4 and then minus 4 when you do that it will give you um, the answer and you can see I'm getting 56 but don't worry with the answer you focus on the sign 56 means it's positive now choose another value which is between negative 0, comma 0,5 and 4 like we can choose a value like 3 because 3 is just before 4 
I can choose three, but zero is the simplest one that you can use. So if I choose three, you see the number changes to negative. So I had a positive, now it's a negative. Let's choose a number after four, it can be seven. So remember, I got a negative uh, in the other one. Then now I put a seven. Now I'm getting a positive again. So the signs where I got a positive here, it was a positive, I got a negative, and then I got a positive. Now, when I go back to my original question, the original question says this is greater than or equal to zero. And anything greater than zero, meaning it's positive. Don't forget, anything greater than zero is positive. So it says on my uh, sketch here, I must come and look for the positive uh, signs. So you can see I have a positive on the outside of these values. So how do I write them? The first one, you can see is going this direction. So it's x, that same direction, but this case is the sign. x is uh, less than the critical value there is negative 0, 0,5. But now because they say greater than or equal to, you also maintain less than or equal to. Then the other value is on this direction, which is x is greater than or equal to the critical value, which is that one, greater than or equal to 4. So those are the two values. x is less than or equal to negative 0, 0,5 or x is greater than or equal to 4. Please don't be tempted to say your answers. Some students, they just solve for x. After solving for x, they use that sign and they write x is greater than or equal to negative 0, 0,5 and x is greater than or equal to 4. You can see that one of them will be correct, but the other one will be wrong. And you're going to lose marks again because they are going to mark you that part. If you don't have it, you're going to get out of four marks, you just get one mark. So be careful how you solve that inequality. Now, as I said, I hope this guys does give you some, uh, what do you call it? Some revision of some sort. You are able to learn and see how to solve um, for the, um, what do you call? You are able to solve for, um, solve for X in this case. The last one is the inequality. Question 1.2 says solve, I mean the simultaneous, the simultaneous equation, six marks, it's good marks. You are solving, um, you are given already, x is equal to 2y plus 1, and then we call this equation 1, and then the second equation is x squared minus 2y plus 3xy is equal to 6. And then we call that equation two. So what we are doing is already equation one is very simplified because already it is given at what is x. So where there is x, we are going to put this value. So where there is x, which is x squared. So you instead of x squared, you say 2y plus one. That's where it was x previously. That is squared minus 2y plus three into 2y plus 1 and then y is equal to 6. Don't forget 2y plus 1 is 2y plus 1 squared is 2y plus 1 and 2y plus 1. Now students usually say 2y plus 1 is, is like this 2y squared. They forget is 2y squared plus 1 squared. That is wrong because you need to expand this, whereby you are saying 2y times 2y, it's 4y squared, because 2 times 2 is 4y times y, is, it's y squared. 2y times 1, it's plus 2y. Then the other one, 1 times 2y, is plus 2y. So you are expanding the normal expansion. 1 times 1 is plus 1. Don't forget that. So is that minus 2y, now plus 3, now this y is good to come and put it just next to 3 so that it multiplies once, 3y, 2y plus 1. Then take the 6 back to become negative 6 is equal to 0. 
Now the 3y multiplies 3 times 2. So we had that minus 2y. The 3y, 3 times 2 is 6y squared because it's 3y times 2y. 3y times 1 is plus 3y minus 6 is equal to 0. Then collect like terms. For example, there is the 4y squared with 6y squared. Be very careful here. They just want to test if ever you are able to recognize errors. Now let's look at the y. We have 2y, we have 2y, we have minus 2y, we have uh, positive 3y. So I will have plus 2y plus 2y minus 2y and then I have got plus 3y. And then the last one I have is a 1 and a negative 6. So which is plus 1 minus 6 is equal to 0. Then you go and check is there any of the items that you forgot. All of them just check if it's either ticked or marked. So that is a way to check that you didn't make error. Now the next step is 4y squared plus 6y squared. It's 10y squared. Now 2 plus 2 minus 2, this goes 2y minus 2y, it goes. So 2 plus 3, it's 5y. And then 1 minus 6 is minus 5 is equal to 0. It's up to you. You can use the quadratic equation straight away like that because this is, you can divide by 5 if you want, but it's not a must. You can use the quadratic equation. You can see this is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So my a is 10, my b is 5, and my c is negative 5. So what I will have is y is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I, I hope you are getting that. So as I said, you now you have to uh, have those values to say what is your B? My B is 5. It's minus 5 plus or minus square root of 5 squared in brackets. Minus 4. My A is 10. My C is negative 5. And then this thing is all over 2 and my A there is 10. As I said, it's up to you how you want to do it. So let's have two values of y. The first value of, um, of, of y, if I use the calculator, I will have in this case minus 5. Start with the positive square root of 5 squared in brackets minus 4. My a is 10. My c is negative 5. And then this is all over. 2 and my a is 10. All right. So if I do that, my first value y is equal to a half or 0, 0,5 and the other one y is equal to negative 1. So we have got y is equal to 1 over 2 or y is equal to negative 1. So these are the two values of y that we got. But now I can go back to the equation Equation 1, remember what we have in equation 1. In equation 1, um, if I can just work it on the other side, we had x is equal to 2y plus 1. So where there is y, we have got two values of y, remember? The, other one, the first one is a half. So when you say when y is equal to 1 over 2, so you have got x is equal to 2, 1 over 2, plus 1. You can use a calculator that simplifies everything or you can use your own knowledge. 2 there will cancel 2 there. So x is equal to 2 there. That's the first one. The second one is, you are, you are quoting again the equation x is 2y plus 1. Now in this case y is equal to negative 1. So x is equal to 2 minus 1 plus 1. So, so 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 2 plus 1, which is equal to, so x is equal to negative 1. 
So we have got two answers here. The first answer, you must put it in, if I can erase this. So how do you present your final answers? You present them in kind of coordinates. So the first one was when x was equal to 2, y was equal to half or 0, 0,5. It's up to you how you want to present it. Then the second one, when x was equal to negative 1, as you can see from here, y also was equal to negative 1. So that is how you can um, uh, simplify such a question and uh, get the answers. But now you definitely need to test them and you must test them with the most um, uh, complicated one. You can see that the first one, don't test it with equation 1, but go to equation 2. And as you can see in equation 2, where there is x, you choose any pair. So where there is x, we can choose the first pair. It's 2. So it's bracket 2 squared, right, minus 2y, and then y is 0, 0,5. And we have got plus 3. And where there is x, we put a 2. Where there is y, is 0, 0,5. If I put an equal sign, it must give me 6. See, I'm getting a 6. You can play backward on the same. But this time, where there is x, remember x is now uh, a negative 1. So you say minus 1. And then where there is y, which was 0, 0,5, is also a negative 1. Because x and y is negative 1. And then also the next one, where there is 2, I put a negative 1. And then where there is 0, 0,5... I also put a negative 1. So this must give me again a 6. So you can see that it's giving me a 6. So it means my two values of x are correct. So that is how you approach a simultaneous equation. Now guys, I hope you benefited from this lesson. As you are preparing for your final exams, I wish you all the best. But more importantly, the most thing that I want you to emphasize here is don't worry with the answer worry with the steps towards the answer remember mathematics is the steps they want to see your working so the answer is not concerning me much but are you able to see how i approach it and how i solve it as um as the method that i'm using and i hope this in a way clarifies some of the confusions you are having now don't forget to like our channel don't forget to forward our channel or send it to your friends and colleagues so that they can also subscribe Remember, sharing is caring. See you again next time. Thank you.